85% of the world's garbage is created by the fashion industry and one in five items of clothing is sent to the tip without even being worn once. For the kids in school now, you're going to have to wait 48 years before you can afford a mortgage for a property in Sydney and 18 to 22 years if you're wanting to buy an apartment. Who, for example, said yes uh, to my podcast after it was there for like half a month and it's like wow, wow he, he has such such a humility to go on a non-existing podcast that's the beautiful thing about the bitcoin community is such a supportive space and everyone's a win for me is a win for all of us the bitcoin community in general is extremely supportive they want to help each other yes there's also this this toxic side in, in bitcoin twitter where, where when it gets like oh this and that but in general bitcoiners actually want to help each other What did inspire you to, to start it? Why did you start your Bitcoin business? Um, it's a funny story. I actually started the business for a, um, a marketing course that I was doing. I had to create a faux business uh, for the project. And um, because I had an interest in Bitcoin, I actually hadn't um, invested. I just um, I discovered it back in 2015 and knew that it was going to be a hit, but um, didn't do anything about it with investing for myself. Um, but I loved it. And so I chose that as my, my faux business. Originally, it was going to be um, education based. Um, but then as I got to know the community, as I got to like, you know, dig around and see what was going on in the Bitcoin space, I was like, no, I want to, I want to sort of create, like, you know, be a bit more creative. And, um, and then the idea of creating fashion for women uh, became the subject. Um, I noticed that there were like it's quite a saturated space in regards to um, the male audience, but there's very little that's um, out there that's targeted directly to women. I mean, yeah, there the, the might be a reason because I see the statistics in, in my viewership uh, and I have like 95% male audience uh, and even like the, the biggest um, female podcaster natalie brunel i think she's the biggest one in in the female uh, as sure. a female uh, led one and she posted the statistic she has like 20 percent female audience like even a female podcaster only has like 20 percent female audience uh so so like they're they're just like so much more men and women in, in bitcoin and i often ask myself like why and we even like i had two podcasts uh, addressing that topic like uh, why and what could we do uh, but uh, do, do you have like anything like um, what do you how how we could achieve like a more because I mean in the end everyone will get Bitcoin and in the end everyone will have Bitcoin so in, in the end it will be 50-50 anyways um, but uh, for me the main reason right now is like probably men are usually a little bit more interested in tech and, and, and money it seems like uh, yeah. do you also see like that's the reason why not more females are here it's possible but I mean, my brain goes on to thinking, is it that there's not that many women in Bitcoin or is it that they're not that many women active in the Bitcoin community? Um, there's a lot of OGs and um, things like that who like to keep uh, their privacy. Um, and it could be partners of Bitcoiners who are active in the community. So the males are the one that's out there um, learning, talking, interacting, and wives, girlfriends, daughters are sort of on the sidelines. I, I, I've wondered about it if it was if it really is such a big gender gap or is it just um, about activity in the space? Yeah, male tends to be more outgoing usually <laughs> and, and be more loud. <laughs> so it, well, it could be something. Yeah, well, the meetups that I go to here in Sydney, it um, I've noticed it uh, to be the case is that the males are the ones at the meetups and yet they're mentioning their partners back home. So... It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's crossed my mind that maybe there are a lot more women in Bitcoin than we realize. Um, and it's just about um, trying to get them to be more included into the community and more active in the space. Is that what you're trying with, with, with Bitcoin diaries also? Yeah, definitely. Um, trying to get them to wear, wear the clothing, represent, um, get people talking and sort of take up space in the community and have a voice um, and also in stuff that's made for them. So 
I understand like there's some there's some great um merchants out there who have who've got some great designs and great t-shirts and that but um I really wanted to make something that was specifically for women so it was intended for uh to be worn by them when it comes to the designs the the styles and the shapes of the clothing um just so that they like they feel comfortable I don't know about you but um if I'm going to an event um or going to meet up with some friends if I'm dressed well, if I feel comfortable, I'm in a better mood and I'm a little bit more confident. So, and I think that's um, kind of the the key that I'm trying to achieve with the Bitcoin Diaries. I, I usually go out with that one now. I have like uh, the Robin <laughs> Sire podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I also I also sell it, but I don't expect anyone to to buy it. I, I just like I want to have a T-shirt where there's like Robin Sire podcast uh, written on there, so I can go out and everyone like sees it and like, oh, what's the Robin Sire podcast? And then I'm like, yeah, I'm Robin That's Sire. Me. It's just like a, <laughs> it's just a, a really small marketing tool, uh, and I was like, I I can have my own 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 thing. Uh, and I, I thought about uh, making a merch thing because my YouTube allows me to put a shelf uh, under yeah. underneath my Bitcoin uh, videos. Mm -hmm. And I just put now this shirt on there. Um, and I'm thinking of like maybe making something. But uh, as, as my views, as I already saw, 95% uh, of the viewership is male. Do you plan, even, do, even though it's uh, directed to women, uh, do you plan to also make like a male line, uh, something that is uh, also specific for them? Yeah, so that's already happening. Um, my, my very first customer was actually men. Um, there, so we've we've got um, unisex sizes in the t-shirts, the hoodies, jumpers. Now we've got shoes now as well, um, and we're looking at some shorts and things like that. So we're definitely catering to men. It's just wanting to have that message that we're really like you know we really made this for the women, um, but definitely inclusive and get those guys in there. And they're they're loving the they're loving the designs and like the feedback that we're getting is great. So I'm pretty happy about that and just the support that we get like the support that i get from both sides not just women but the men as well they're being so helpful um just wanting to give a hand um you know like you know whether it's just some advice or someone to talk to or anything like that or plugging plugging the business on twitter um they're all doing their little bit i think that's the beautiful thing about the bitcoin community is is it's such a um supportive space and everyone's sort of like a win for me is a win for all of us. So, uh, um, yeah, I really love that about about Bitcoiners. It's amazing. I've come into the space and I started the podcast and I was not big on Twitter. I was not known by anyone. Uh, and I just started out with my podcast. I came from IT security sales and my experience was like, oh, you write 10 people uh, and one maybe might be something like a may one is might be interested in your messaging. Uh, and then I came into Bitcoin. I started that podcast and I was came, coming in with the same mind. I was like, oh, let's make a list of like 100 people that should be on my podcast and let's write all of them. And that's why it's now daily because almost all of them said yes. Yes. Yeah. They they wow. Rarely someone that uh, said, no, I don't want to be on your podcast. And there are really big guys that came in really early. Like Jeff Booth, for example, said yes uh, to my podcast after it was there for like half a month. And it's like, wow, wow he, he has such, such a humility to go on a non-existing podcast, a really small one. Uh, and support uh, the, this this thing, and I just saw that um, the Bitcoin community in general is extremely supportive. They want to help each other, uh, mm -hmm. and yes, there's also this this toxic side in in Bitcoin Twitter where, where when it gets like oh this and that, but uh, in general, Bitcoiners actually want to help each other. Yeah, I agree. Definitely, definitely what I've experienced, and I've been in the community, like actively in the community, maybe eight, nine months. So yeah, already like as soon as, like, you know, as soon as I jumped in, um, like, well, as soon as I started the, um, the business, I was approached by, um, love is Bitcoin to, um, to join a partnership with them. Um, proof of ink to do a design collaboration. They've just like, they just all come in, um, uh, access tribe to do a podcast, um, with her. And this is like, maybe four 
to six weeks after I launched. Amazing. I love it so much that uh, the community is so supportive. Uh, one question that I had in my mind, uh, you also have uh, Bitcoin payments. Um, I've seen with other merchants and other providers, they say like, oh, only rarely people uh, actually pay with, with Bitcoin. Do you have some percentage that you can share? Like uh, if, if people actually use uh, the, the pay with Bitcoin uh, option? Yeah, about 70% use Bitcoin, which, um, would, yeah, which really surprised me. But um, there's a lot of spend and replace dudes um, coming to the shop and, and enjoying uh, spending on spending in Bitcoin. Nice. Is there, um, you're in, in Australia and I guess there is like, it's not, it's not El Salvador. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there, 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 there's the fiat world still uh, in a different uh, place there. Uh, do you have any like... Uh, problems with like accepting Bitcoin and then converting it or because you also have to pay bills in, in fiat probably. Yeah. Um, I haven't done my tax return yet, but I've spoken to my accountant and it's going to be a bit of a, a, like I was, can we swear? I was going to say shit show. Um, so, <laughs> um, yeah, there's like, there, there's things like I have to convert the amount. So as soon as a customer pays in Bitcoin, I have to convert that amount, um, the amount um, in Australian dollars and record um, and record that amount. I, I can't leave um, payments recorded in Bitcoin, so I can keep I can keep it in in the um, in Open Node to um, as Bitcoin, but all of the conversions have to be done for the records. So the revenue counted is then in 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 in. Uh, fiat currencies, uh, mm -hmm. but you can keep it in 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 Bitcoin, which is also Sorry, interesting. Uh, interesting, interesting. Yeah, it's. Uh, uh, I I'm unfortunately not a business that can accept Bitcoin because I get my, my oh some some sponsors of mine uh, pay in Bitcoin, but uh, like the the most majority money is like YouTube, Twitter other sponsors and it's like usually fiat payments so i did not even uh had the chance to see like where is the oblig uh, obligation when i get fiat uh, bitcoin payments the only thing is like when i get tips in in bitcoin but it, they're so small that my tax mm -hmm. consultant says like oh it's 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 a great deal now because they're like really really small till now uh it will be interesting how it's in austria and in all around the world but i think it's similar i already heard that do you have a discount for bitcoin payments or is that is it something that you consider uh i definitely consider i haven't set it up yet but um but yeah that's that's a good idea you got me you got uh, me off guard there that's 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 definitely something worth considering <laughs> yeah, it, I think it's great uh, to incentivize Bitcoin. I already, I also saw that you have like uh, Bitcoin payments preferred, not accepted, but preferred. That's uh, I really love that. Yeah, that was a recent change. I actually saw it on um, Panties for Bitcoin, and I was like, I love it, and so I I took it for myself. So yeah, like, and that's the thing. Like, we're all learning from each other. We, um, you know whoever's out in the space they're they're there for us to learn from and watch and and pick up little tidbits and tricks so yeah it's it's something that um i i, I think it's a good message to have bitcoin preferred rather than just accepted yeah de definitely do do you come from from the fashion industry or what did you do uh, before you started that uh, I'm a graphic designer by trade, so um, I used to work in music and entertainment um, and then later on in uh, corporate finance. Uh, when I was working in music and entertainment, I did a lot of band merch, so when music, uh, musicians and artists would tour the country, I'd, um, I'd design their merch and their packaging for their albums and things like that, so I've had experience there. Um, and I think that's given me a, a good leg up in um, knowing how to design graphics for fabric. How, how different is it from designing for someone uh, an, a, a merge to making a brand? For me, it's like, yes, I kind of have a merge with like my logo on there and then some, some maybe some nice things that I usually say on the back or something like that. But a brand, it's, is, is it different? Mm, I think because it's it's my own project. There's not really any uh, restrictions to what I can create. I'm sort of 
learning as I go. So um, the the logo that I, I made, I made really, really quickly. And I noticed that like, no, there's a lot of problems with it. And so I've had to flip it on its head and do some things different. Um, changing from women only to expanding to men is another um, challenge for the brand. Um, and also thinking of um, expanding into homewares because I got um, a few requests that ladies are saying, look, um, not so, like because we're trying to do um, like we try to cater for all levels of, um, you know, so bold statements and offset um, options. Um, some women have said, look, we're not really um, comfortable wearing Bitcoin merchant, uh, merchandise, but we'd love stuff for our home. So um, so that's something that I'm going to be looking into over the next month. It's fa it's interesting for me to see when uh, we are not as comfortable wearing it outside. And I've also seen that with, with other Bitcoiners. They're like, I don't want to have like a bit Bitcoin logo there. I don't want to have like scream out on the world. Oh, I'm, I'm that I'm that Bitcoin guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's um, I did a poll actually on my Twitter and it, there's the whole spectrum. Some of them are like, yep, we got to do our part. We're part of the Bitcoin marketing team. There's lots of discussions to be had. Um, others are like, um, I want, um, I'm a bit concerned about my safety. I don't want people knowing that I've got Bitcoin in case of this and that. And other than just, are just a, like what, like you said, flat out, no, I don't, you know, it doesn't appeal to me. So yeah, um, the, the whole spectrum's out there. And I think that there's a possibility for me to cater to, to all of them because, um, There's all, yeah, because there's all levels of, of their interactivity with the Bitcoin community. They're also going to think to themselves, well, how, how much of it do I want to express in my fashion, in my homewares, in my shoes, my, you know, accessories and things like that. Yeah. And I think there's a, a really big space. Uh, and I think Ch just Lena's art, uh, is, is she oh, called? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot of the subtle uh, thing i think she has like a, a t-shirt a nice one with just a, a blizzard here for the lightning network yeah like tiny really little the, the... lightning yeah and um i think was it was it on sailor that um had the they have the tiny little round bitcoin right up at the neck and it's really cleverly placed because um it's perfect for when they've got their blade he's got his blazer on and it just pops up there up the top i thought it was genius Very, very subtle, elegant, nice stuff. And I like that uh, that kind of thing because, as you said, it's genius to pop it here. And yes, Sailor had it on. Uh, also, when I interviewed him, he he usually now has it always on this this Bitcoin shirt here, uh, and then he can his place on top of that. And I think it's genius to have like very subtle things and very small things. I also have a cap on that's completely black, but it has a black. Uh, icon with Bitcoin on top of it. So if you look closely, you actually mm -hmm. see the Bitcoin logo. But if you're just like passing by, you don't you don't really notice it. So I like uh, the style where it's like it, it says Bitcoin or Bitcoiners know it's Bitcoin. Uh, mm -hmm. Or the Bitcoin Prague um, uh, bag, goodie bag has uh, the, the Prague um, uh, as a city on there. And then on the left side, 21 and then on the right side, M. It's just so subtle. If that's you're not in Bitcoin, it. you never know that's a Bitcoin thing. But if you mm -hmm. are in Bitcoin, then you notice it that, oh, 21 million. Ah, interesting. It's a Bitcoin thing. So I, I like that kind of art a lot where you notice as a Bitcoiner that's Bitcoin, but outside of the Bitcoin community, you don't really notice it. You don't really know it. And I think that's for the people that want to wear it, but have maybe security concerns or don't want yeah. to be... Uh, interrupted in the day and like, oh, are you are you are you from Bitcoin? <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. And I like I like to think that we've covered all the bases there. So from really really bold options to the really really covert, to make sure that there's something for everyone's comfort level. Mm, very cool, very cool. Um, a different question. Um, you you'd have a graphic designs now. You have an, an apparel brand. Um, how do you think on, on a Bitcoin standard, if you now think like 50, 100 years out uh, and you have this sound money standard where like people like think long term, um, how do you think the, the, the designing could change? I see it a lot with like, I'm now in Vienna, 
and you can see really nicely that is old beautiful buildings with like a, a lot of details and a lot of really nice things and then there's these new things where it's just like oh it's a glass block in the middle of vienna or it's a glass tower and it's i guess it's preference but i really like the old buildings i'm also now in the old building so i've if I go around the floor, it squeaks everywhere and I love it. Uh, and it's like this, uh, this tall uh, doors and it's like uh, small little things in the doors. And it's, it's just with may, way more love and, and detail. So I, I really like that kind of a style. Uh, could you envision to, that we actually go back to this more detailed, more loving, more, uh, uh, yeah, more detailed uh, designings? I love this question. It's a, it's it comes right it goes right to my heart. So I'm a big fan of vintage clothing and slow fashion. Um, so I would definitely love to see it go that way. But I think it can go one of two ways, or maybe it could go in both directions. Is it could go back to slow that people are buying things um, classic styles, getting them you know made to a really good quality. Um, keeping them, mending them, extending the life, all that sort of thing. But then there's also um, about, I think it's, let me think, give me a sec. I think 85% of the world's uh, garbage um, is created by the fashion industry and one in five items of clothing is sent to the, to the tip before um without even being worn once so it's there's a massive amount of um trash that comes from the fashion industry and one of the things that um, the bitcoin diaries does is it's print on demand so there's no wastage you're you're basically once you've ordered something then it gets made for you and sent and sent out so there's there's just there's there's two there's a there's two ways that could be beneficial so because when you've got those things that are made really well, but they don't get sold, um, they'll end up in the tip. So it's, yeah, what do you do? Thank you. You already made it halfway through the video and I'm really, really grateful to have you here. Two things make this channel possible. You as a watcher and listener who keep supporting this channel. And another one is all the Bitcoin brands that I partner up with, like 21Bitcoin, who support me from the very start and where I personally buy my Bitcoin from. With Code Robin, you even get a discount when you buy Bitcoin with them. And now also Bitbox. Bitbox is the simplest and secure way to secure your Bitcoin. And I heard a crazy statistics. Only 2% of Bitcoiners hold their Bitcoin in a hardware wallet. How crazy is that? Don't be in that 98% bracket. Be in the 2% bracket. And if you have self-custody and you know your friend does not have, maybe he needs a Christmas present. Maybe he needs a birthday present. And a small life hack, if you use code ROBIN, you get 5% off your order plus you support my channel. And now let's get back to the video. 85% percent well it's a, it's a really high number with, with when you have like a lot of uh trash and and, and then people uh trash on bitcoin's uh, environment uh, impact <laughs> but there are so many other things that uh, like bitcoin is actually useful for using the energy and then we use so much energy because i think a lot of it comes down to the field world and also um when i see uh, sci-fi movies and there's like people from the future coming or aliens are coming they always come in like one suit they always have like all all have the same clothes <laughs> I, I always wonder like are we at one point as a civilization on earth just deci deciding oh yes we will wear this thing and everyone will wear that <laughs> I hope not, by the way. <laughs> yeah, no, freedom yeah. of expression is des definitely something I'd like to keep. De definitely, definitely. Did you have actually uh, any other um, uh, uh, challenges uh, while you were uh, coming up with uh, the Bitcoin business or anything that were, like, r was really challenging uh, for you when you had this uh, thing uh, starting from nowhere? So. So I just cut out there for a second. I was just asking <laughs> if, uh, if you had any other... Uh, you, you, you see me and hear me again? Yep, you're back. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Um, I was just asking if you have any encounters or issues with uh, when you started the Bitcoin business 
with uh, I don't know regulatories or like you you had to start something. Were there, were there any learning curves uh, to that or any issues that you had along the way? Probably. Um, let me think about it. Technically, like with all the t um, with all the tech, I've definitely had some struggles. I uh, ended up using WooCommerce instead of Shopify and found that it's very very complex um, in comparison. So I've got help with a um, developer who's helping me with a few things at the moment. Um, and it's got to a point where the website's gone way beyond my, um, like, an, like an easy thing to use. It's not, it's not user-friendly for me anymore. So that's, that's definitely something that had, like, you know, had I, had, had I sort of not started with WooCommerce, I probably would have swayed toward, towards Shopify and to see if that would be an easier, um, easier path. What else? The fact that it's fem like that it it's directed to females is a huge, huge challenge because there's, um, there's not a lot active in the community. It means that it's, um, so the amount of Bitcoiners that are out there, um, in the world is still pretty small. And the percentage of women in that Bitcoin community is smaller still. So my challenge is finding them, getting, you know, connecting with them, um, sort of letting them know about the brand and what you know what we've got to offer, and then convincing them that it, that it's something that they'd um, love to be a part of. So the the whole um, direction of the business is a challenge in itself. I can imagine because we are in a really really small part of the world with Bitcoin in general, but then we have uh, when you just take like there's like this finance bubble then there's this crypto bubble then there's the bitcoin only bubble and in the bitcoin only bubble you chose only the the females so it's like a really 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 niche niche thing uh, but i feel like some <laughs> but, but i feel like it's it's uh, oh one of the one of good. the other big challenges oh sorry oh go, go ahead hello oh um one of the other big challenges is that the um the price of bitcoin changes the spending habits of bitcoiners so um it's basic the the, the yeah the spending habits are, are gonna chop and change depending on how you know if you know we're going high low crab walks it's yeah every everything affects sales so that's that's a massive challenge i've seen it in uh in my content whenever the bitcoin price does something i get more views more subscribers more everything uh, and when the bitcoin price does nothing it's kind of it still grows it still go does its thing and still people watch but just not as much like the excitement is definitely here when the price does something which is interesting to see that that like Yes, when the price moves, then people Google it, people search it, people watch it. When the price does nothing, and I've seen it with, um, uh, I, I've spoken with hardware wallet uh, CEOs, I've spoken with uh, exchange CEOs, and they all say the same thing. When the price moves up and down, sales go up. When the price moves sideways, Side sales side. sometimes even go down, and, and they, they notice those uh, uh, moves a lot, and it's it's it's... Uh, Bitcoin is an interesting uh, business venture when you're here and when you when you do something. Uh, how did you actually uh, ca came into Bitcoin? How did you uh, come and discover Bitcoin? Um, I was working at a bank in Australia um, as a graphic designer on the anti-money laundering and counter-terrorism financing program. And um, so I was reading a bunch of finance articles whilst I was doing um, design work there. And I stumbled across some articles about Bitcoin. And because I was working on the anti-money laundering program, I knew that the, the laws were getting stricter and stricter for customers um, with um, know your customer and um, how, much, how much detail you need to give them to open up a bank account. Um, and knowing that in um, developing nations, those sorts of things just aren't possible and it just makes it harder and harder for them to... Um, transfer their money um, and then having to use um, more expensive options to get money back home and things like that. So straight away I've gone, oh, there's a market for this. It's definitely going to um, fill a gap and it's going to change lives and things like that. And then the other reason was because um, back 
at uni, I had a I had a boyfriend from Albania and he was a student who often um, needed funds from family to help him help him out. And we had to go to Western Union and MoneyGram and things like that. You had to bring your passport. You had to wait until the place was open. You had to wait two weeks. Um, it just was like the ridiculous amount of time and effort just to get money from A to B. So I like as soon as I started reading about Bitcoin, I was like, yep, I mean, this is, you know, this is great. However, I wasn't very financially savvy and I didn't um, think of Bitcoin as um, something worthwhile investing in. I was just like, yep, I'm glad it's around. But do I, um, I didn't have any friends or connections that were, that were into Bitcoin either. So it wasn't until last year when I started this, when I started the project, I announced it on my social media and out, out of the woodworks, um, I had some friends come in, come in touch with me, one who was um, helping me as an advisor for the website. And then it turned out that his cousin was a, a tax agent for crypto. And from then on, it was just like pop, 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 all of these people um, popping up in my life that saying, yep. I'm into this and, um, and, uh, yes. And, and now I'm here. Amazing. I also see a lot that, uh, Bitcoin even changes lives and like gives, gives your life a different uh, tra trajectory all, all of a sudden. Was it also for you, like, uh, something that like definitely changed the, the, the direction of your life or did it change anything else? Uh, I think my life is pretty ch like changed a fair bit over the last couple of years anyway, but. I think, but more than anything, it's it's the connections that I'm making and the people that I'm spending time with. So, like, I've got a um, a catch up that I have with um, a bunch of beautiful women who are um, living in America. Um, every single Wednesday, well, for them it's Tuesday. Every single Wednesday, and we get together, we discuss business, we discuss life, and things like that. And and this has just um, grown from. I think it was a, like a Twitter, um, a guy on Twitter found me and he's like, just connect with this lady. And then it, t it turns out that I'm making these amazing friends out of nothing. So a, a tiny little um, Twitter conversation has turned into me connecting with these, these beautiful people. And they're now, I would consider good friends in, in the matter of, you know, a matter of a few months. So it's, it's definitely showing me um, a different kind of, strength in connection that um that happens when you're interacting with bitcoiners yeah it's uh, I, i love what uh what, what the bitcoin community right now is uh it's such a, a big nice and supportive place where you can do a lot of different stuff and uh yeah it's it's, it's a great great place to be right now i feel like um do Uh, my my end routine question before we come to the actual end routine is always like uh, what you are currently passionate about besides Bitcoin. And uh, the the aim for this question is always uh, Bitcoiners are really interesting and I think we should learn from each other. So what are you currently passionate about uh, besides Bitcoin and besides your Bitcoin business? I would say my family, that's probably the one thing that's become hu like hugely passionate about. Um, I've moved back with my family about two years ago um, and um, I'm now closer to um, my siblings. I'm one of five kids, so um, I'm now closer to a lot of them, which means I get to spend a whole bunch of time with them and their children as well. Um, I love my dogs. That's part of the family as well. So, yeah, I'd say the biggest passion that I have at the moment is just being involved with them and enjoying the time that we have to, to spend together. I love that answer. Family comes actually up as uh, a lot of times uh, in the answers with that. And I love that about the Bitcoin community. It seems like uh, Bitcoin supports uh, those uh, uh, great family values and, and brings uh, the, the people back to, to the, 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 Yeah, to those family values. Uh, I love it a lot. Um, we have an end routine in the podcast where the, the previous guest is asking a question uh, mm -hmm. for the next guest without knowing who the next guest actually is. And it's an interesting question that, uh, that you got. Um, who do you think needs Bitcoin the most but doesn't realize it yet? Oh, man. Um, who does it? Um, I would say the up and coming generations. 
So like Gen Z, um, I don't know what, what it's like in other countries, but in Australia, there's, there hasn't been much talk about it in, in those, in those years where, um, the idea of owning a home in Australia is now near impossible. I think the, the numbers were you for the, for the kids in school now, you're going to have to wait 48 years before you can afford um, a mortgage for a property in Sydney um, and 18 to 22 years if you're wanting to buy an apartment. And it's just, yeah, whether or not they know it, know they need it or not, I'm not so sure, but they're definitely the ones who need it the most. Yes, and uh, it's great because I'm generous, uh, Gen Z, actually. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 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 so I hope I can, I can get uh, some of mine. But it's interesting because I look at my statistics uh, in my YouTube and the average viewer on this YouTube channel is like around 50 years old. Uh, and I have, have even uh, above uh, 65 years old. I have like 12, 15% of my subscribers are like that uh, old, uh, which is interesting because there are more people above 65 than under 25, that's, which is my current age. So uh, even though I'm, I'm, I'm pretty young, a lot of um, uh, later stage uh, people actually follow me and, 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 and view my, my stuff. Uh, which is amazing to see that older people have like this openness and this humility to just like listen to even young people and see what what they're up to and it's it's i think just it's it's, it's really great that uh, the bitcoin community just uh grew up uh in this in in this world and it's not uh, something oh it's a new thing a nerdy thing but yes we are actually growing up we are getting institutional money we're getting on country level we're getting in all those different things that uh, Bitcoin is is, uh, is 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 good for us. so yeah uh, perfect then uh, thank you Chen uh, for being on on my podcast uh, I, I love to talk with you uh, where can people when they want to ask you questions uh, and they want to find out more about you what you're doing where can people find you um, they can e email me um, at hello at the bitcoin diaries dot com or they can find me on Twitter which is BTC diaries twenty one um and instagram as well um or the website they can jump on there <laughs> and send us a, send us a message um yeah uh, or if they want to come to a sydney meetup um or there's another there's a conference coming up in october in sydney and i'm telling everybody that this is the perfect perfect country to have a have a vacation in october and they should come into <laughs> come into the conference october what, what conference is this I think it's cheat code. Oh yes, uh, cheat code from from um, Peter McCormick is this? Yes. I think yes. that's the one. Yeah, I just look it up. Cheat code. Uh, it is yes, twenty fifth of October. I love it. Yes, it is a great, uh, great place to be. Hundred <laughs> percent. Oh, it's 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 free for people under sixteen years old. Maybe oh. they let me in. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't hurt to ask. <laughs> Doesn't hurt to ask, yeah. Uh, perfect. And uh, thank you, Chen, for, for being on and for everyone watching and listening. Uh, thank you for being here and I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.